the Isle of Wight, known for its diverse coastlines, picturesque landscapes, historical landmarks and sensational sunsets. But if you take a stroll through any island town or village, there's one thing you're always guaranteed to see. Art. The gushing green landscapes and beautiful blue seas around the island have provided ample inspiration for many local artists. We'll be interviewing a small selection of island artists, all of whom specialise in specific mediums and shall be talking about what makes them tick. It would be a, a sad place, I think, if we, if we didn't have art around us. It's like an expression of people's creativity. It brightens, it brightens us up, I think. Makes us think. It's attractive. Well, it doesn't have to be, but... Yeah, I think it's important everywhere. It makes people look at things differently around them. It can reinforce uh, positive uh, relationships. It can make people see the world in a different way. And it also is very important for the economy of this country and undervalued. Art is uh, what we call our creative work or creative experience is something that everybody has from birth. It's part of how we learn and understand the world. So from my point of view, it's absolutely intrinsic to being human. There is a huge range of art present on the island, including exquisite paintings, stunning sculptures, lush drawings, gorgeous glasswork and much more. Each artist we have spoken to has chosen a specific way to work and have expressed themselves in different ways. My name's Melanie Swan and I predominantly work in textiles at the moment. I'm Kate Bolton and I particularly like watercolours and oils, although sometimes I do pastels. My name is Paul Critchley and I sculpt molten glass. My background is as a painter, but I saw the work of an incredible textile artist, a felt maker called Jeanette Appleton, and her style of work was so beautiful, the colours remained so clear and extraordinary that I was instantly hooked and went on her workshop and I've been experimenting with textiles ever since. I mainly paint in either oil or watercolour. Watercolour tends to be the medium that, if you're a painter, that's what you drift into, because when you're a child, you're, you're painting poster paints in school, and then somebody buys you your first little watercolour set, and so then you start to go down that route. I mean, art has been an integral part of so many cultures for thousands of years. It's always been an important part of a culture. Different countries approach art differently. Kind of oil is a traditional medium, so I wanted to try it. Having tried it, I love it. A lot of people paint in acrylics now, uh, as, as opposed to oil, because they're similar, but I don't like acrylics. Art has thrived over the years on this island, but why have these artists chosen to produce art, and who inspired them? I can go through my sketchbooks and see old designs, things, ideas I've had, which I've never thought, oh, I can't make that, it's way too hard. And I'll go through and I think, oh, I quite like that idea. Sometimes I'll be making a piece of work and it will all go wrong, but it will suggest something that I think, oh, I could use that for something else. 
It's a mixture of two things. It's what we call the medium, that's the thing I'm working with. I just try things out and eventually something leads me on and it's usually a combination of colour and texture. But I don't start out thinking I'm going to create an image of a stone wall. Something leads me to it and then I see that that's where I'm going. It just depends, really. Um, sometimes I might just have an idea in my head. It might be something that I see while I'm out. I'll sketch, take photographs, come back, want to paint it. And other times I have to really search around for something. I know I want to paint, but I don't know what I want to paint. <laughs> sometimes I'll see things out talking to people. Sometimes I hear a, a programme on the radio and I actually like it will evoke a feeling of like, oh, you know, I kind of like what they're talking about there. I like the movement of that. And I'll relate it to a piece of work. So it's got nothing to do with the, what they're talking about. But they just might make me think about something. Um, sometimes it will be art. I'll be in the gallery. I'll be out walking, surfing, whatever. You know, and you just think about something and it, and it, and it kind of sparks it. But there's often you'll find that there's themes running through the work which relate a long time back to things that interested me when I was sort of 14, 15, 16, when I was doing loads and loads of sculptural stuff. And those themes recur throughout your sort of career, if you like, you know. Like I've always done these figures that are all sort of intertwined and kind of wrapped around each other. A bit like those Chinese carvings where all the figures are sort of like, and I, I keep getting drawn back to that all the time. I think favourites change over the years. What was my favourite a few years ago, I'll probably look back and think, oh, I can do better than that. So my favourite at the moment is one that I sold probably about three weeks ago at an art club exhibition. And it was quite a big oil of Indian fishermen on the beach with sunset going down. So that was my favourite. I don't have a particular favourite, but there are pieces which I find I go back to and look at and I'm very pleased with. And this, this is one of those pieces. It's behind glass, obviously, so you can't get the full sense of the texture, but it's the colours and uh, the delicate stitching. I did own an A-level at school and then, because I was quite good at it, I was being pushed towards going to art college. At that time, it was all wacky off the wall stuff. Throw your paint around, run your bike over it, that sort of stuff. It was very much the thing. And that wasn't what I wanted to do. And I knew that if I went to art college, I would hate it because I wouldn't want to do what they would expect me to do. Um, I was much more of a traditionalist and I knew I would be like a fish out of water so I didn't go and I went to teach training college instead and then one of my subjects was art although I ended up teaching primary school. So <laughs> I didn't study art formally in the sense of going to art school. I trained as a painter in France in a very specific form of painting but in later years I've gone on a lot of workshops, I love learning new things, but I didn't have a formal art school training. I happened to be quite good at it when I was younger and I was luckily encouraged by my parents. I think if my parents had turned around and said, no, no, you're not doing art, I remember so many discussions with, uh, with my dad, there's no, no, you can't have a career in art, you can't do this, you can't do that, you should be doing other subjects and things. Um, and I, I, I went down the art route and it has been quite a difficult route but I studied it because I've wanted to and I've been supported in doing it and I've worked very hard to make it a success. After interviewing our artists and discovering what influences them and why, it's clear that many things inspire them but it's also their own imaginations that drive them forward and inspire others. The sun will be setting soon and artists will be poised with their brushes, pastels and oils, waiting for the sensational sunset to come. Tomorrow will be another day for artists all over the island to be inspired by every facet of their worlds, the plays of light and shadows, the lines of architecture and nature that could not possibly be reproduced, and most importantly of all, their imaginations.